by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. The wildfire burning near Redding, California is now the ninth most destructive in state history. And that's not all. I'm Laura Podesta. I'll tell you how many more fires are burning in that state and the increasing devastation they're causing. The financial dispute over the road repairs in front of the Gallatin Regional Park continues. I'm at Air Spab and coming up I'll let you know how city and county commissioners are trying to resolve this. Good morning to you. Welcome to your Tuesday and your final day of July. Our top story comes out of California. The death toll from the raging wildfires in the Golden State has risen once again. They're now being blamed for at least eight deaths. And most of those flames are still far from contained. CBS's Laura Podesta has more on the tragedy that is unfolding in California. Firefighters in California are struggling to make headway against a slew of wildfires. Across the state, there are now 17 major fires that are burning. The largest ones are in the north. We've had some very large pushes where it's uh, burnt up a lot of acres extremely fast. The biggest by far is the car fire. By Monday night, it had scorched more than 100,000 acres in and around the city of Redding. More than a week after it began, it's estimated to be less than 25% contained. The approaching flames forced tens of thousands of people to evacuate the area. On Monday, some of the displaced residents were allowed to go home. Uh, it's just feeling wonderful to be able to come home and be able to sleep in our own bed and knowing that our house is still here. Over 100 miles to the south, evacuation orders are also in effect. The ranch and river fires began Friday and grew rapidly. Fire officials believe they're getting the upper hand on them. This portion of the fire is much less active than what we saw 24 hours ago, but that doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet. The sheer number of wildfires has left fire crews exhausted. Many in California insist the state's fire season now seems to be a year-round event. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Again, the car fire already believed to be the ninth most destructive wildfire in California history. So Unbelievable. 25% contained wow. is all they have on that. Yeah, those conditions are just right for that. Ugh. Dry, Ugh. hot, windy. Windy, windy, all of those kind of things. And that's Ugh. just uh, kind of what they're looking at. We're seeing a little bit of that, Carson. Nothing. Yeah, to I mean, nothing though. to that extent. I mean, check, check this map out right here. Yeah. That, that indicates the smoke from the... Um, wildfires in California and it's so thick you can't see the state borders there and those arrows that indicates the jet stream the jet stream that's going to transport some of that smoke over into uh, southwest Montana which will make it seem a little hazy today and really for the rest of the week satellite and radar not showing much right now 30s in West Yellowstone 40s and 50s for the rest of the area and then here's that Bozeman planner uh, with that ICAM out in Belgrade. 50 degrees is the current reading under clear skies, but temperatures will rise into the middle to upper 80s by 4 and 6 o'clock today. So definitely drink plenty of water if you have outdoor plans. And then for Butte, currently 47 degrees, but clouds will be on the increase with temperatures rising into the middle 80s. I'll have my full forecast in a few minutes, but more news with Chet and Missy. Thank you, Carson. Coming up on 634, today becomes day five for the search for 15-year-old James Anderson, who was last seen Friday night when his family was involved in a boating accident on the Yellowstone River. According to the Park County Sheriff's Office, that search is now in recovery mission. James, along with his father, Gallatin County Sheriff's Captain Jim Anderson, James's mother Angie and his sister were all aboard the boat when it capsized. Angie was killed at the scene. Captain Anderson and his daughter made it safely to shore. James has still not been found. More than 150 people took part in that search over the weekend, but the sheriff's office has since reduced the size of those search crews, and the search area along the Yellowstone River reopened Sunday at 9 p.m. In other headlines this morning, the battle between Gallatin County and Bozeman City continues as commissioners on both sides talk about who should foot the bill for a road repair project. MTN's Madaris Babb has more. The city has been asking Gallatin County to pay for about half of the cost associated with the road repairs to West Oak in North Ferguson for more than a year. Mayor Cindy Andrus hopes that the financial dispute can be resolved in this upcoming week. The county has known about their obligation to pay for these road improvements since they purchased the road. And so we are just simply waiting for them to come forward and pay for those road improvements. 
Bozeman is asking the county to pitch in a little over 900000 an amount Galton County is protesting to pay. Wanting a meeting of the minds, Andrus dialed County Commissioner Steve White. I called Commissioner White several times and wrote him several letters to meet with me to begin having those discussions. And Commissioner White refused to meet with me. From White's perspective, he thought it would be best not just to meet one-on-one, -on -one, but let each county commissioner have a voice in the discussion. Our single point was we just wanted to be able to have three commissioners in the meeting. Uh, there was objection from the city uh, of doing it that way, and um, I respect their opinion, but uh, uh, our government wanted to have three commissioners. Once White declined, Andrus replied with a letter saying, quote, your refusal to meet with me one-on-one -on -one is disappointing. She says as a way to keep the conversation alive between both parties, she invited them to the next city commission meeting. We are just now waiting to see when they will be paying for their obligation to these road improvements. County commissioners say that all three of them plan to be at the August 6th meeting. In Bozeman, Madaris Bab, MTN News. And of course, make sure to stay tuned uh, next week as we talk, uh, take you to a city hall for an update on how that city and county plan to tackle these costs. We'll have more on that next week. Of a story that we will be following continuously. For sure. Now, when we think of Montana history, many of us picture the days of gold mining and logging. Few picture the 20th century Montana as the cutting edge of medical science. Yeah, but in this week's Montana Made, MTN's Jacob Fuhrer introduces us to a Montana man and his invention that would have far-reaching impacts on the medical field. The name Holter probably rings a bell to many in the Treasure State. It's the family whose roots can be traced back to Montana's mining days and is credited with introducing the lumber industry to the state. Even today, various landmarks bear the family's name. As historians will tell you, it's hard to understate the family's role in Montana's early days. They, the Holter family and businesses, have their fingers in everything. One of those businesses, the Holter Research Foundation, started by Jeff Holter, specializing in something called medical physics. Out of that company becomes a large number of amazing medical devices and techniques that are used throughout the world today. Perhaps one of the Holter's biggest contributions? A device that's now ubiquitous in the medical field, invented right here in Montana's capital city. The Holter Heart Monitor, the brainchild of Jeff Holter and research partner Bill Glasscock, has gained worldwide attention since it went into commercial production in 1969. The device tracks each beat of the heart for days at a time, helping diagnose issues like arrhythmia and unexplained fainting. The monitor was developed at the Holter Research Laboratories in Helena, this site on Neal Avenue, now occupied by the Federal Reserve Bank. The Holter monitor is a small, wearable device, roughly the size of your cell phone. Although it wasn't always that way, that's Holter wearing more than 80 pounds of equipment when the monitor was in its more primitive form. We, as today, with all of our devices and our instant communication may have a tendency to see Montana as very primitive in the 40s, but I'm going to say it was just the contrary. Holter was hardly content with just the monitor and continued throughout his life to push the envelope in biophysics, working to establish nuclear medicine facilities in Helena. While the Holter family had a big impact in Montana, it's clear that Norman Jeff Holter had an even bigger impact on the medical community. In Helena, Jacob Fuhrer, MTN News. Now, interesting though, Jeff Holter would later use his own invention on himself after suffering two heart attacks during the 1970s. He passed away in 1983 at the age of 69. That's fascinating. Yeah, interesting stuff. The Holter wow. monitor. Interesting. Yep. Learn something new every day, Chet. Me too. We do have to take a quick break. When Montana This Morning returns, we have the headlines from around the state and a look back at the Yellowstone fires of 1988. Yeah, that was 30 years ago. How has the park's forest recovered in that time? We'll take a closer look. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. We're in Northern California where the fast-moving flames are threatening highly populated towns. And actor Alan Alda will be here. He asked to come on our broadcast to make a personal announcement. We'll see you at 7.